Hi, my name is Gautam and welcome to Gautam Does. What you're looking at are keyboards and I'm going to try and explain them to you. This is a full size keyboard. Those are the function keys, the number row, the navigation cluster, the arrow keys, and the numpad. How often do you really use your numpad? If the answer is very often, then you probably want to keep this one. But if not, let's get rid of that. This is called a 10 keyless keyboard. You still have the number row up here, but you now have a lot of space on the right side for your mouse if you're a right hander. But the navigation cluster and the arrow keys still take up a lot of space on the right. So what if we can somehow make this tighter? When you do that, you get what's called a 75% keyboard. You still have your arrow keys, you still have your navigation cluster, most of it anyway, but now you have a much more compact keyboard with a lot of space on the right hand side. But since a couple of keys might be missing, they're put on an additional layer called a function key. What is a layer? You're already familiar with layers. Your default layer is a shift key. Without holding down shift, these alphabet keys and the number rows are really only lowercase alphabets and numbers. When you hold down shift, it's as if there is an additional layer of keys over the current keyboard, which allow you to access uppercase keys as well as the symbols which are shown on top here. So shift is a layer that you're already familiar with. Fn is just an additional layer. So the print screen, scroll lock, and pause keys are missing. So probably holding down Fn and pressing these top three keys would give you access to those keys. How often do you use your function keys? Again, if the answer is often, you probably want to stop here. But if the answer is not, then we can probably get rid of that too. And then we have a 65% keyboard. But what if we do need the function keys from time to time, like saving a game or loading a game using F5 and F6, for example? Well, you still have them here. The number row acts as a function row. You hold down Fn and 1 through 10 becomes F1 through F10, and these two keys becomes F11 and F12. Now we're getting used to layers, and since we've come this far, why don't we put the arrow keys in the navigation cluster in a layer? Why do we need to do that? Because think of it this way. When you rest your hands on the keyboard, you rest them on ASDF JKL semicolon. That's called the home row, and that's the home position. If you need to use the numbers, you need to extend your hand upward or even move it. We are all used to this, so we don't think about it much. But that's a lot of movement throughout the day, and that could introduce fatigue. Since we're used to layers anyway, let's put those on a layer. Remove the arrow keys on the navigation cluster, and you get a 60% keyboard. Now, where are they? Hold down FN1, and IJKL or WASD become the arrow keys. This is just an example, and it depends from keyboard to keyboard what the actual layout is. Now, since we've come this far again, we've dealt with the arrow keys on the navigation cluster. What about the number row? Uh, let's put them on a layer again. Let's say we put them on a top row. You get a 40%. All the missing keys are visible as uh, legends on the side, and holding down the blue FN key will give you access to the blue keys. For example, page up, page down, print screen, home, end, and holding down the red FN1 key gives you access to the number row, the function keys, and brackets. So far, so good. But let's push it a little further. When you need to press keys on the upper row or the lower row from the home row, for example, uh, your fingers rest on ASDF and you need to press E, R, W, or T. Since the columns are not aligned vertically, you need to move your fingers sideways just a little bit. But your fingers are not meant to move sideways. So what if we straighten the columns? What you get is called an ortholinear keyboard, or ortho for short. Let's take a moment to talk about this. The keyboards available commonly are row staggered, meaning each row is staggered relative to the previous one. Ortholinear just straightens everything out. Of course, ortholinear keyboards don't have to be small. On the top left is the plank, and right here is the prionic, its larger cousin with a number row. And you also have larger ones. This one has the same number of rows, but it tries to separate the left and right halves apart by three columns of keys. Now, let's think about that for a second. Why does it do that? When you put your hands together to rest them on keyboards like this, your hands are not shoulder width. You are having to move your hands closer together and that's going to bend your wrist sideways and that's not very comfortable. This keyboard here tries to address that by separating them by a little bit. But why just stop there? We can actually split keyboards. This one on the top left is called the Nyquist and the one on the bottom right is called the Let's Split. Split keyboards are great. 
because you can reposition them any way you want depending on how you're sitting down. You don't have to be in a perfect ergonomic seating posture. You can put stuff in the middle. For example, your cat can sit there. More practically, you can put your trackball there so that you don't have to move your hand to the right. You can use that space anyhow you want. Are you still with me? If not, take a break and watch this again. But if you're good to go, we're almost there. Let me switch over to my camera and show you something. I know, I know, the camera quality kind of sucks. But hey, I work with what I got. Now, with ortholinear keyboards, we've straightened out the column to address the fact that your fingers curl straight and don't curl sideways. We've split the keyboard to avoiding scrunching up your hands in the middle and possibly avoiding bending your wrists like this. So far, so good. But take a look at this. When I rest my middle and ring fingers on the hand, my pinky finger is one whole row below the home row. When I try to align my pinky finger, my other fingers are on the top rows. Of course, we don't type like this. We curl our fingers. But even so, you can see that the pinky finger is shorter than the rest of the fingers. Now, what if we can address the length of individual fingers when we build these keyboards? So switching back over to my slides. We take these columns and then we adjust them. We stagger each column to match the finger width. And when you do that, you get column stagger. With a keyboard in this layout, when you rest your fingers on the home row, all your fingers are comfortably resting on the home row without having to stretch. And of course, these keyboards don't have to be this small. For example, the keyboard on the bottom right is called an iris. This still has a number row, and you can find larger keyboards with more keys. But the point is, you exchange row stagger for column stagger to straighten out the columns to align with how your fingers curl, and the column stagger helps with the length of your fingers. And this is what I have on my desk. I'm a programmer by trade, so I have to type beyond basic text and punctuation a lot. A lot of symbols, a lot of numbers all the time. And I still manage to get by every day with this. And you can see that my fingers rest comfortably on the home row. And at any point to reach any key, I don't have to move more than one key away from the home row. And that's the appeal of these small split ortho keyboards. Well, that has been my introduction to weird keyboards. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.